Well, we're celebrating our five-year anniversary today, and what better way than to have uh, Kiko's two experts with us this Tuesday. Jim Wyckoff joins us on the line, our technical analyst. Jim, thanks for joining us. Hello, Danielle, and hello, Peter. Hi, hi. Nice to see you again, Jim. And lucky us, we have Peter Hug in studio with us today, uh, Kiko's uh, Global Trading Director. Peter, thanks for coming on out to help us celebrate our five-year anniversary. You're welcome, Danielle. So, Jim and Peter, uh, you guys are obviously very popular with our audience, so we thought it would be interesting to open up the floor uh, to them and, and so they could ask you the questions they've been wanting to know about the current state of the gold market. But before we get into the questions, I just want to get some of your thoughts of, of how these past five years have been for you. Obviously, it's been a, a very exciting uh, road. Peter, let's start with you. Any uh, reflections? Well, to me, it's sort of deja vu. I was, uh, I don't know if I can say lucky enough, but I was around in uh, 1980 when uh, the gold market first uh, peaked up at 850 and silver hit $50. So uh, over the last five years, watching silver hit 50 again and uh, obviously gold taking out a much higher level at 1900 uh, was sort of like deja vu to me. The, uh, the volumes that were in the markets and some of the, uh, you know, the excitement that, that came along with the markets, uh, yeah, reminded me of the old days. Uh, Jim, over to you. Uh, were there any standout moments for you over these five years uh, in dealing in the gold market? Well, Danielle, I, I looked at my uh, monthly charts uh, here just before the interview, uh, trying to get a, a sense of uh, what's been going on the past five years. And we uh we started out 2008 2009 with a pretty good uptrend in the price of gold and in 2011 we hit an all-time high and since then it's been downhill and it uh made me it reminded me uh being in this business for over 30 years how cyclical uh commodity markets are uh commodities go through periods of boom and bust uh, we in early in our anniversary period, we went through a boom cycle, hit a new high in gold, and the past couple of years it's been a bust cycle. The important thing to uh, consider here is that history shows that bust cycles lead to boom cycles in commodities, and that's including gold and silver. So I think that uh, for those uh, downtrodden, bullish, precious metals traders right now, I think they can look forward to some better times in the future. Valid point. Let's get to our questions uh, from our viewers. Now, Jim, I'm going to start with you. And this is a question that I've seen come up often. So that's why I, I threw it into the pot here. So it says, Jim, it seems as though events that should move gold, and he's looking at over these past five years, such as the threat of major military conflicts and banking crises like the confiscations in Cyprus, have had very little or unexpected effects on gold prices. Are gold prices becoming increasingly detached from world events? So basically, in a nutshell, Jim, the viewers asking, why is gold not acting as a safe haven like it once used to? Well, Daniela, just the past couple of weeks, it has acted a bit as a safe haven asset, a bit more so anyway. I think the, the main drag on the gold market uh, here the past few weeks or even the past few months has, has been the rebound in the value of the U.S. dollar and also the, the generally downtrodden raw commodity sector. Uh, I think that uh, it can't be understated the, the bearish impact on the gold market that we've seen with crude oil prices trading at two-year lows, uh, grain prices at four-year lows, uh, the, the, you know, the specter of price deflation. Uh, history shows that deflation is the arch enemy of commodity market bulls, and that is including the gold market. But, but like I said, I think that we are seeing some very early clues maybe that this uh, commodity down cycle is nearing an end. We're seeing some of the raw commodities perk up, uh, like the coffee market, uh, no pun intended there. But uh, the, uh, we're going to have to see some certainly some more heavy lifting by the bulls to, to suggest that gold prices can sustain a, a near-term price uptrend. But we are seeing some very early green shoots in my mind that uh, we could be close to or near uh, or at a bottom in the uh, gold market. Uh, Peter, any thoughts on uh, gold acting as a safe haven? Do you feel it still is? Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, from a macro perspective, uh, geopolitical events on gold have very short-term effects now. Uh, you know, the issue with the Cyprus banks, the issue with Ukraine, uh, you know, some of the issues in the Middle East, uh, have certainly supported gold and have caused spikes in the gold market over the past year. I mean, remember the the market started at twelve hundred dollars at the beginning of this year, hit fourteen hundred, and now we're back at twelve hundred. 
So there have been spikes because of geopolitical events in the market, but they tend to be short-lived. The macro picture, the fundamental picture of gold, is determined a lot by uh, the economies of the world. Um, it's also determined by supply and demand, and the demand for the physical market has been waning over the past year and a half. It is now starting to pick up again, and, and it's starting to be, I'm starting to become more optimistic on the supply-demand side, on the physical side, so I'm starting to become more bullish. Okay, on another uh, topic now, let's talk about the Fed, and uh, without uh, going into hour-long uh, conversation, this is a topic that always comes up. How will gold perform in an inflationary environment versus deflationary? Any, uh, any thoughts, Peter? Well, I think all commodities generally uh, perform well from a price appreciation point of view in an inflationary environment. Uh, but I do think uh, we're still currently, at least globally, uh, in a deflationary environment. Uh, the Europeans are having trouble. Uh, Draghi's got his back against the wall. He needs to uh, stimulate that economy. Unfortunately, the Germans are very reluctant to put a QE package on the table. They have memories of 1920 and mm -hmm. the hyperinflationary era then. So you have one engine that's sputtering along, and it's not robust, but it's the U.S. And in that context, uh, uh, I would suspect that the dollar trend, at least for the next six months, should continue higher. It seems to be in the Europeans' interest and desire to drive the euro lower, to try to export their way out of their slowdown. That should be dollar bullish. Generally, that should be negative for the metals. The inflationary surge, which I expect will come, is probably still a good year away, maybe a year and a half away before all of this monetary easing feeds itself mm -hmm. into the market. Uh, Jim, any thoughts on inflation versus deflation here? Well, uh, Daniela, I agree with most of what Peter said. Also, uh, the, the specter of deflation, especially in the European Union, could have a bullish impact on gold because if, if the confidence in the European Union itself, if the confidence in the euro currency continues to weaken, that could uh, prompt some safe haven demand for gold. And in fact, people could over in Europe could be using their euros to buy the hard asset gold. So that's one thing I want to keep a uh, close eye upon. Jim, I'm going to throw the next question to you and then I'll ask Peter the same. Uh, this is another popular question that kept coming up. Uh, viewers were wondering if this could be the 1980s for gold. Uh, do you see another 10 years of a bear market here, Jim? No, I don't, Daniela. I'm a I'm a firm believer in cycles. Uh, as I said earlier, I think we are near the bottom of the raw commodity down cycle. And once uh, crude oil prices, once grain prices start to turn up, and they will, uh, I think you're going to see gold, silver uh, prices uh, follow. Maybe not in, in major bull market runs, but, but certainly in a sideways to higher price fashion. Let me point out one more thing. We are just now also starting to see some uh, uh, weakness in the in the U.S. stock indexes and also in world stock market. Uh, trading and investing is a money game. When money starts to flow out of paper assets like the stocks and at some point the bonds, uh, I think you're going to see physical assets benefit, those hard assets. And I think that's going to see money flows start to go into those assets, including the precious metals. Peter, any thoughts? Do you see a 10-year bear market ahead? No, I don't. Um, and I think the, uh, the issue with the, uh, the Fed that people are overlooking, um, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, the talking heads out there have been saying for the past few months that the uh, uh, higher rates in the U.S. are imminent. And I've been totally in, in the opposite camp. I, I do not believe the Fed uh, can step in the way of what's going on in the rest of the world. And, uh, you know, the surprise, I think, that is not factored into this market is, uh, and I know nobody wants to hear this, but there could be a QE4 coming next right. year. So if anything, I'm in the camp of interest rates being low for a considerably longer time than a lot of the analysts out there are expecting uh, from a U.S. perspective. And I think that should feed its way into an inflationary environment somewhere down the road. That's funny. That's the same thing Jim Rickards echoed to me last week. He, he uh, foresees a QE4 in the cards as well. But let's wrap now, uh, gentlemen, with or on a positive note. Uh, what could we see as a price support for gold? What are some factors you're looking at, Peter? Uh, uh, short term, I think a lot of it, uh, I mean, take all the geopolitical issues off, off the table for now and uh, just look at the, the short term factors I'm looking at. From a technical perspective, I need that 1185 level to hold. 
Uh, that would be a triple bottom for gold. Uh, it's already tested there two weeks ago. I think it will, but if it breaches that level, we could see, at least in the short term, uh, prices uh, you know, in the low 1100s, maybe 1120. Um, but my fa I'm looking at the US dollar right now. As long as that dollar mm -hmm. strengthens, there, could be, there should be, let me rephrase that, a headwind for gold. I, I, it felt a little odd to me this morning. The U.S. dollar uh, strengthened almost, uh, almost a percent overnight against the euro, and gold actually was bid up from yesterday's price. So there may be something bigger at play here. The worry about the equity market uh, might be coming into, uh, into four, and as Jim said. Jim, any thoughts? Uh, anything you're looking at for support for gold prices? Well, I agree with what Peter said on the on the, that 1180 area. If we drop below that, that's going to be another leg down in prices, uh, very uh, very probably. Uh, the thing I would uh, encourage the uh, Kitco listeners is to keep an eye on the crude oil market. It's the leader of the raw commodity sector. Crude oil right now is in a steep price downtrend. Maybe some more downside price pressure in the near term. But when that crude oil market turns and starts to trend higher. I think you're going to see the rest of the raw commodity sector follow, including gold. Good thoughts, Jim. I saw uh, Peter nodding in agreement. So you guys are just really on the same wavelength here. And I just wanted to say that to both of you, Jim, Peter, it's been uh, really fun working with you guys these past five years. And I look forward to uh, many more years of, uh, of educating and informing and just having uh, fun uh, doing these uh, pieces with you both. So right. thank you both. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Jim. There is a lot of fun working with industry professionals like uh, Peter and Daniela, that's for sure. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> and thank you for watching this very special edition. Kiko News celebrates five years this week. We'll have a roster full of uh, interviews uh, this week with uh, some of the most celebrated names in the industry, so be sure to stay tuned. In the meantime, you can email us at newsfeedback at kiko.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Jim. I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate the fine members of Kitco News. I understand it's a fifth year anniversary. Wow, how time flies. I believe I've been affiliated as a Chart This member, so to speak, for the last couple of years. It's been an honor and a privilege. And really, happy anniversary. And to the next five years, great success. <music>